Welcome back, everybody. In this video, we'll be starting section 3.5, which is about dividing polynomials. And if the material we learn in this section will help us in our following sections where we're continuing to solve polynomial equations and factor polynomials. So let's get started. So the way that we do division with polynomials, this is something that possibly you learned already in intermediate algebra, if so, that's great. If not, you're gonna learn it here. Um, the way that we do, uh, look at dividing polynomials is really close to how you do division with numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, an example of just dividing two numbers, because maybe it's been a while since you did this by hand, and also uh, you'll be able to see the parallel between the steps that we take here and then with the steps that we take when we're dividing two polynomials. So when you're dividing, for example, 31 by seven, you take 31, you draw it inside the little house, right? That's what they call it in grade school. 31 goes inside the little house, seven goes outside. And then it's a four step divide, multiply, subtract, bring down procedure. So seven divides into 31 four times, that's the divide step. Then you multiply, four times seven is 28, that's the multiply step. Then you subtract, 31 minus 28 is three. And here there's nothing to bring down and so we're finished. And you'd stop and say, well, back when you're in grade school, you'd write maybe four remainder three. If we write this as a fraction, we'd write this as four and three sevenths as a mixed number, right? And remember with a mixed number, uh, that is a way of writing four plus three sevenths. So this would say, okay, if you have 31 and you divide it into, uh, sevens, you'll get four whole things and there will be three left over. A uh, real life interpretation for that, I guess, would be if you think, okay, 31 days is how many weeks? 31 days would be four seven day weeks and there would be three leftover days. So that's a way to look at it. So the way that we'll do division uh, with polynomials is basically the same. We're going to have that same four step divide, multiply, subtract, bring down procedure. So uh, here's how we'll set it up for this example. We'll have uh, x squared plus 4x minus 1 inside the so-called little house, and then outside we'll have x plus 7. All right, so now we're going to go through uh, dividing this. So uh, first of all, we will have uh, a difference here versus when you're dividing numbers is on this, we only have to consider the highest degree terms at any one time. So uh, we'll look at x divided into x squared. So we're considering basically, basically x squared divided by x. x squared divided by x will be x. Okay, so that's the extent of the division in this first step. Remember, it's divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. So we've divided. And when we do the division, we're only dividing that first term, x, into the first term on the inside, x squared. x divides into x squared, x times. Next, we're going to multiply. When you multiply, you're going to multiply the part I have shown in here in blue by both the x and the 7. So x times x is x squared, and x times 7 is 7x. Okay, that's the multiply step. Okay, now subtract. X squared minus X squared is no X squareds. That's good. 4X minus 7X is negative 3Xs. Okay, so we've finished the subtract step. Now we'll bring down our minus one. Okay, that's the end of one cycle. Now we're back to divide. X divides into negative 3X negative three times. Negative, now multiply. Negative three times X is negative 3X. Negative three times seven, negative 21. Okay, so you wanna be very careful right here. Um, the negative three X minus negative three X is, is zero X as you're aware. Uh, in here, notice that uh, right in this step, we have negative one and we're subtracting from it negative 21. That's negative one plus 21, which is 20, okay? So if you were thinking this should be negative 21, or negative 22 rather, if you were thinking this should be negative 22, then what you were doing was adding the two negative numbers. But we need to always subtract in that second row, so we're subtracting negative 21. So this is negative 1 minus negative 21, so we'll be positive 20. 
Okay, that takes some getting used to, um, but you'll get that. All right, so that finishes it. So we have found out that the quotient or answer to our division here is going to be x minus three. And then we could write this as the remainder, 20 divided by the divisor, x plus seven. So that is kind of the uh, analog of how we wrote 31 divided by seven as four plus three sevens. So it's the quotient, which is the answer to doing a division, plus the remainder divided by the divisor. Okay, let's try that again. So we'll have this time x cubed plus four x squared minus six x plus one, and we're going to divide that by x minus one. Okay, four step divide, multiply, subtract, bring down procedure. So uh, we'll have first x divides into x cubed, x squared times. Remember what we're doing here is x cubed, the leading term on the inside, divided by the leading term on the outside, x. x cubed divided by x makes x squared. Now we're multiplying. x squared times x makes x cubed. x squared times minus one makes minus x squared. Okay, now x cubed minus x cubed is gonna be zero. And then here again, you want to be very careful. 4x squared minus negative x squared is 5x squared. That dash that you see right there does not mean subtraction. That dash right there means a negative one. We're always subtracting, right? That's always what we do right after the multiplication is the subtract step. The thing is, is that we're subtracting a negative one. Four minus negative one is going to equal five. That's where the five came from. Subtract, bring down negative six x. Okay, x divides into 5x squared 5x times. Now we're multiplying. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times minus 1 is minus 5x. Okay, almost done. The 5x squared minus 5x squared is 0. And now we have minus 6x minus negative 5x. So you got to decide to yourself, will this be minus x or will this be minus 11x? So negative 6x or negative 6 minus negative 5, that's negative 6 plus 5, that's negative 1. We'll have minus x. Bring down the plus 1. x divides into minus x, negative 1 time. Negative one times x is minus x. Minus one times minus one is plus one. When you subtract here, you get zero. So this one divided in evenly. So we have found that our final answer here is x squared plus five x minus one. So uh, to write that, you can write x cubed plus four x squared minus six x plus one divided by x minus one equals x squared plus 5x. Minus 1. OK. The sequence of doing the divisions takes some getting used to, especially that part about dividing by or subtracting a negative. Uh, but you will get used to it with practice. OK. Some kind of general advice uh, to help get this uh, correctly more often. Uh, when there are terms missing, you want to definitely include zeros as placeholders. Our next example, we'll see that happen. Um, also, if the dividend and divisor are in standard form, the quotient will be two. So let me show you what is meant by that first. Here, x cubed plus four x squared minus six x plus one. Those terms are in descending order by degree. X minus one is in descending order by degree. You'll notice that the answer was 
squared, then x is then one. So descending order by degree. That always will happen when you have both the dividend and divisor, that is the two purple polynomials here. When you have those in descending order by degree, the answer will come out in descending order by degree also. Okay, the part about zero placeholders for missing terms will come out in our next example. And also the degree of the remainder will be less than the degree of the divisor. We'll talk about that here in a second. Let's go ahead and get this one done. So for this one, we have 2x cubed minus 7x plus 5. We're going to divide it by x squared minus 3. So what's different about this is we do need to include missing uh, placeholders for missing terms. So I'll write this as 2x cubed plus 0x squared minus 7x plus 5. And then in the divisor polynomial, there's also something missing. We'll have x squared plus 0x minus 3. Okay, why? Okay, when you're dividing numbers, 1,509 divided by 207, let's say. When you're dividing numbers like this, fortunately we're not going to because it's kind of not so fun. Um, when you're doing that, when you have numbers, the zeros um, are there to uh, keep the place value, right? 207 is 207. If I leave the zero out, it becomes 27. We have to have the zero in there to uh, keep track of uh, the fact that the two is 200, not two tens, right? But when you write x squared minus three, the exponent of two on there tells you that it's x squared, it's not anything else like x's. So we're able to leave out ordinarily that plus zero x. However, when we're writing a division problem, it benefits us to include that plus zero x and also in here the plus zero x squared in order to help keep our work lined up as we go through from top to bottom. So basically, um, as far as the math goes, it doesn't change the value of the polynomial. It's just going to help us keep our work all lined up. If you like, try it without those in there and see how uh, well that works for you. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get this done. X squared will divide into 2x cubed, 2x times. Now we're multiplying. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. And then 2x times 0x is 0x squared. And then 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Okay, now we're subtracting. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that's 0. The 0x squared is also add up to 0. Negative 7x minus negative 6x is minus x. We'll bring down our plus 5. And then here, x squared doesn't divide into minus x. And so we're finished, actually, on this one after just one step. So our final answer will be 2x plus negative x plus 5 over x squared minus 3. Okay. So here I'd mentioned, don't forget the zero placeholders for missing terms. Here the part about the degree of the remainder being less than the degree of the divisor. The divisor in this problem is x squared minus 3. The remainder will always have a degree that's less than that. This is degree one. It could have been degree zero. This has degree one, which is less than the degree of our divisor, which was degree two in this example. Going back to uh, our earlier example, we divided x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus one by x minus one. This thing has degree one, right? This thing has degree one. So what's one less than one is zero. So we had to end up with a constant remainder. It happened to be zero in this case, but we had to get a constant remainder. In our first example, we divided by x plus seven. That has a degree of one. So we're gonna have to get a constant remainder. The degree of the remainder will always be less than the degree of the divisor. Okay, all right. So uh, what's next? This is kind of pretty official looking. This is uh, the division algorithm. And this is uh, basically just kind of some fine print that expresses some of the relationships that we've been talking about. 
Here, if P of, if P of X and D of X are polynomials and D of X is not zero, we never want to divide by zero, then there are unique polynomials Q of X and R of X so that we can write P of X as Q of X times D of X plus R of X. If you divide through term by term, you'll get the equation shown here in blue that P of X over D of X is Q of X plus R of X over D of X. Okay, and the degree, degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. Um, this, um, you would use more uh, as we kind of uh, advance. Um, you can read through that. If you have any questions on it, let me know. Basically, this is just saying that we're able to rewrite the polynomial as a product of a quotient and um, the divisor plus the remainder. So in terms of numbers, what that says is, going back to our original number example, 31, we can write 31 as 4 times 7 plus 3. The uh, quotient times the divisor plus the remainder, okay? We'll see in the next section um, like two ways that that can be helpful to us. Okay, so uh, let's do one more of these kind of long uh, divisions and then we're going to go on to see uh, something more fun or more interesting. All right, so this one looks pretty long. We have this thing that is degree three and we're dividing by something that's degree two. And so uh, we could end up with a remainder that is degree zero or one. Um, fortunately though, our quotient will only be degree one. And how you can see that is just by taking a look at the leading terms. This thing starts off x cubed, the divisor starts off x squared, and I know x cubed divided by x squared is just x. So we're gonna start at the degree one step. So that's um, kind of helpful for us. Uh, to see that we're only looking at doing one, basically one step in this division. Okay, let me double check and make sure I didn't skip over any missing terms while I was talking. I got x cubes, x squareds, x is the numbers. If I miss any missing terms, then my work is going to end up misaligned. So yeah, I can see this one here, x squared plus 0x plus 5. All right, so then uh, here, x squared will divide into x cubed x times. Then multiplying x times x squared is x cubed. x times 0x is 0x squared. x times 5x, x times 5 is 5x, sorry. And now subtracting, the x cubed terms go away. And 6x squared minus 0x squared is 6x squared. 8x minus 5x is 3x, then we'll bring down our 32. x squared divides into 6x squared six times. Now we will multiply. 6 times x squared is 6x squared. 6 times 0x is 0x. 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, subtract, the x squared terms go away, 3x minus 0x is 3x, and then 32 minus 30 is 2. Okay, so we'll get a remainder of 3x plus 2. I know I'm going to stop here because our divisor has degree 2 and our remainder has degree 1. And I have to stop right there because the degree is uh, lower, right? So, um, Okay, that's it. So um, that suggests that we can rewrite our original polynomial, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 8x plus 32 as the quotient x plus 6 times the uh, divisor x squared plus 5 plus the remainder of 3x plus 2. All right, like I said, we'll see a little bit more usefulness for that uh, in a later section. Okay. All right, so um, one more example. This one I've done kind of uh, in advance just to kind of save us a little bit of time, but we'll walk through the steps for this. So uh, we had x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7. We're going to divide that by x plus 2. So x divides into x uh, cubed x squared times. 
and then we're going to multiply. x squared times x gave x cubed. x squared times 2 gave 2x two squared. Subtracting, the x cubed terms go away. We're left with 3x squared. We'll bring down our plus 0x. x divides into 3x squared 3x times. 3x times x is 3x squared. And then uh, 3x times 2 is 6x. When we subtract, we have 0x minus 6x, which gave negative 6x. Then we bring down this minus 7. x divides into negative 6x, giving negative 6. Uh, multiplying uh, the negative 6x's go away. We have negative 7 minus that negative 12, which is again 5, not negative 17. And then uh, that's it. So. On this one, we would write our original polynomial x cubed plus 5x squared minus the 7 is equal to, sorry, it's going away on me, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7 is equal to x plus 2, x squared plus 3x minus 6 plus 5. So the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. All right, so I'm certain by now uh, you've noticed that there's, uh, these are long, right? A lot of writing is involved with these and um, it can seem kind of repetitious, right? Um, so it turns out that for certain classes of problems, we're able to uh, simplify our work quite a bit by looking at something called synthetic division. Synthetic division has kind of an unfortunate name because it sounds kind of like it's fake right? Like synthetic oil is not real oil, right? Um, and it actually is division that we're doing. It's just that we have a special and kind of different and easier way of showing the work in certain types of problems. So first of all, before we go any further at all, this procedure is good or useful when our divisor looks like x plus a constant or x minus a constant. So I would have been able to use it on this example, but on this example, I wouldn't have been able to because it, we're dividing by x squared plus five. Okay, so um, synthetic division, fortunately we're gonna end up uh, having situations where this is uh, applicable uh, coming soon. Um, here's how it works. Uh, one of the, some of the downsides for the regular division we've been doing is that some of the stuff that we write, we don't end up using, right? In the problem we just did, we had uh, this x squared plus 5x squared minus 7 divided by x plus 2. All of the stuff that is yellow highlighted right here, you know, after we divide, we multiply. And then the way that we rigged it, all the stuff here in yellow we never used. x cubed minus x cubed is zero x cubed, but we never write that. And so it, it was kind of a waste to write the, x, the yellow highlighted stuff because we never used it. Okay, the fact that we keep everything in standard form, right, means that writing the degrees on the x's uh, is unnecessary, right? So taking a look right in, I'll just take this one out right here. All right, so let's say we covered all that up. Okay, what is the and thing there? Uh, the power on x that belongs into there, it's got to be x squared, right? Because of the position that it's in, right? So having uh, the power on x dictated by the position means that we don't really need to write what that power of x is. Uh, additionally, we saw uh, many times that subtracting a negative can be confusing. This last example where we had negative 7 minus negative 12 works out to be 5, not negative 17. That has the potential to be confusing. So we're going to use synthetic division in these certain special cases, uh, and we'll see that that ends up being a lot faster and hopefully less error prone. All right, so let's see how to try it on this one example. Okay, we have x squared plus x plus three. We're going to divide by x minus two. First of all, let me do this kind of the uh, usual way. Give us one more example. Okay, so x will divide into x squared, x times. Let's go green. And then we're multiplying. x times x is x squared. 
x times negative 2 x negative 2 is negative 2 x we'll subtract x squared minus x squared is uh, no x squared x minus negative 2 x is 3 x we're going to bring down our 3 x divided into 3 x plus 3 is going to be uh, 3 3 times x is 3x. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. And then here we should end up with a 9. All right, so as you can see again, uh, here we do have some kind of repeated writing that we didn't end up uh, ever using. So uh, let's see how we can use synthetic division to help. Here's how. Uh, taking a look at the, device, the dividend, x squared plus x plus 3, we're just going to look at the coefficients. That was 1x squared, 1x and a 3. Okay, we're going to draw a line underneath it. Off to the left, draw a uh, little box or backwards capital L if you like. Here we're going to divide by x minus 2. Okay, so put a plus 2 in the box. Why plus 2? If you put a plus 2 here instead of a minus 2, that's what's going to enable us to, instead of subtract, we're going to be able to add instead. Okay, instead of subtracting, we'll add by turning that two in that negative two into a two. Then the initial one, our leading coefficient, is going to drop straight down. Okay, that's the setup. Make sure you know where each of these things came from. The, the one, one, three is the coefficients of x squared, x, and three. The two that's in the front is the opposite of that negative two in x minus two. And then the one down below the line is just the uh, one that we had above it uh, dropped straight down. Okay, so now how do you do uh, the division? Instead of a four step divide, multiply, subtract, bring down procedure, it is a two step multiply and add procedure. So we're gonna multiply and add and that's it. The number inside the box multiplies by the number below the line. And then we put the answer above the line. Two times one is two. And then we'll add one plus two is three. Okay, try that again. Number in the box multiplied by the number below the line. Two times three is six. Answer goes above the line. Then add three plus six is nine. Okay, the final answer is read off below the line here. We know that we divided something that was degree two by something that is degree one, so we have to have a degree one answer. So this must be x plus three and a remainder of nine over x minus two. Okay, we'll do that again. Okay, a couple of times. Okay, so we're going to divide next x squared minus 5x plus 4 by x minus 1. So we're going to pick off the coefficients first. That's 1x squared minus 5x's plus 4. Out front, we'll have a little box. And instead, it's x minus 1, so we're going to put a plus 1. Draw a horizontal line. That initial 1 leading coefficient drops straight down. OK. Now we're going to repeatedly multiply and add. 1 times 1 is 1. We'll put the answer above the line. Add negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Multiply. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Add negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So our final answer, we divided something that was degree 2 by something that's degree 1. So we have to have something degree 1. It's going to be x minus Four. So what we've got is that x squared minus 5x plus 4 divided by x minus 1 equals exactly x minus 4 with no remainder. Okay, so we're going to try that again. Um, you should pause the video and try this on your own and then uh, check your work uh, by following along. Okay. So here we have 4x squared, there's no x's and a negative 3. So don't forget that missing term. Now we especially have to put it in, right? Because we're not writing any of the x's. 4x squared, no x's minus 3. 
We're dividing by x plus 5, so we'll have a, sorry, wrong symbol, um, we'll have a uh, negative 5 in the box. That initial 4 will drop straight down. Okay, so now we're multiplying and adding. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Adding 0 plus negative 20 is negative 20. Multiplying negative 5 times negative 20 is 100. Negative 3 plus 100 is 97. So our final answer here is going to be 4x minus 20 plus 97 over x plus 5. All right. Synthetic division is really nice when you can use it. There are versions of synthetic division that you can use when the divisor doesn't look like x plus or minus a constant, but they're not as dramatically nicer as the regular, nicer than the regular method. This one is way nicer than the regular method. Okay. All right. So we're going to try that two more times. All right, so here, uh, x cubed minus 7x plus 6. So this will be 1x cubed, no x squareds, minus 7x's plus a 6. We're dividing by x minus 1, so we'll have plus 1 out front. Draw a line, the initial 1 drops straight down. Multiply, then add. 1 times 1 is 1. Now we're adding 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Answer goes above the line. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. And then we'll add again and get 0. So this time we divided something that was degree 3 by something that was degree 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So this has to be x squared plus an x minus a 6, and this time there was no remainder. Okay, one more, a story problem, and then we're all done. All right, so this one, it looks kind of long, and if you like, you're welcome to try this the kind of traditional way. I'm going to do it as one more example of uh, synthetic division. So here, we'll have 6x to the fourth power. There was 10x cubed, 5x squared, a single x and a 1. Drawing the line, the 6 will drop straight down. We're dividing by x plus 2 thirds, so we'll have minus 2 thirds out front. Okay, multiply and add. Negative 2 thirds times 6 is negative 4. 10 plus negative 4 is 6. Negative 2 thirds times 6 is negative 4. 5 plus negative 4 is 1. Negative 2 thirds times 1 is negative 2 thirds. Adding negative 2 thirds plus 1 is 1 third. Negative 2 thirds times 1 third is negative 2 ninths. And then 1 plus negative 2 ninths is 7 ninths. Okay, so then we divided something that was degree 4 by something that was degree 1, so our final answer should be degree 3. So we'll have 6x cubed, 6x squared, 1x, a 1 third, and then 7 ninths over x plus 2 thirds. All right, so that has been our quick look at uh, synthetic division. We have one more problem to do, and it is kind of a story problem. Um, it's a little contrived, honestly, but um, I wanted to make sure and do an example like that you would see uh, done in the textbook. So here it goes. It says, for the following exercises, use the given volume of a box and its length and width to express the height of the box algebraically. So we'll do 67. It says the volume is this, we know the length and width, and we want to know the height. Okay, so one thing that can be helpful if you're like struggling to figure out what to do is uh, try to make an easier version of the problem. So we know the uh, formula for the volume of a box, right? 
the volume is the length times width times height. On this, we're basically told what the volume is. So let's say I told you I had this box and its volume was 72. And I knew that its uh, width was three and its uh, length was six. How would you find out the height? Okay, so what you would do is say, okay, well, I know that it has to fit this equation. So three times six is 18, right? So I know that 18H has to equal 72. So H would have to be 72 divided by 18, right? So um, that's basically what we're going to do is we'll take the volume, which is this cubic polynomial, and divide by the product of the length uh, and width. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get that done. So let's begin by multiplying the length and width together. So that will be 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 4. So we're going to go ahead and multiply that out. We will have 6x squared and then negative 8x plus 9x minus 12. Simplifying that a little bit, we'll have 6x squared plus x minus 12. Okay, so now we want to divide this degree 3 polynomial by this degree 2 polynomial. Sadly, because the polynomial that we're dividing by has degree 2, not degree 1, we're not going to be doing synthetic division uh, here. So we will just have 6x squared plus x minus 12 we're going to divide into 12x cubed plus 20x squared minus 21x minus 36. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done. 6x squared divides into 12x cubed, 2x times. 2x times 6x squared will be 12x cubed. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 12, negative 24x. Okay, we're going to subtract and so the x cubes will go away. We'll have 18x squareds and then here we'll have three x's. I'm so glad you've gotten used to that. We'll bring down the negative 36 and then um, one more step. 6x squared divides into 18x squared three times. Three times 6x squared is 18x squared. We'll have 3x and negative 36. And then it's going to divide evenly, so we're all done. So the height has to be 2x plus 3. Okay, all right. So um, that's uh, the end of that. I did want to uh, point out that we could actually do this using synthetic division in the following way. Here, 72 divided by 18. If you want 72 divided by 18, wouldn't it be the same as saying 72 divided by 6 times 3? Okay, because 6 times 3 is 18. So we'll divide 72 by 6 first. 72 divided by 6 is going to be 12. That's 12 divided by 3 or 4. That is, if you want to divide by 18, first divide by 6, then divide by 3. So just for fun, let's see if we could go ahead and do that here. We're going to take our original polynomial, this cubic uh, polynomial. We're going to first divide by the 2x plus 3, and then we'll divide through by uh, 3x plus 4. All right, so um, this will be uh, a little bit trickier to do using synthetic division because the leading coefficients of the divisors are not ones actually. So um, better to do it the way that we did. Um, there is, um, it is possible to do this using synthetic division, but uh, doing it the way that we did actually is easier just because this was a two and a three in front of those. So um, I will write that up and I'll put it in the notes. Um, on Canvas, but um, otherwise we will leave it at that. Okay, so that takes us to the end of this section on division. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.